Hello and welcome to another MRCOG video from ACE Courses. This video is about the management of patients with diabetes in the perioperative period. This video is based on our successful book, this one here, called Obstetric and Gynecologic Surgery, Challenges and Management Options. It's well worth a read and if you buy it, any profit from this goes to support doctors in impoverished countries, mostly in Africa and Asia. So you will also be doing good in that way. Diabetes is common. It affects 3% of UK population. So it's important for you to know how to manage these patients in the perioperative period. The surgery-related risks of diabetes include poor glycemic control, aspiration, pulmonary complications, wound infection, pressure sores, renal failure, and even myocardial infarction and stroke. The aim of perioperative care is to maintain blood glucose level between 6 and 10 millimoles per liter. In terms of prevention of complications, what you should do is to liaise with the diabetic team and of course the anesthetist and do a thorough preoperative assessment. You should obtain history about usual glycemic control and any pre-existing diabetic complications. You should check the blood pressure and urine for ketones and protein. You should also do blood tests for HbA1c, urea and electrolytes and a full blood count. If the patient is over 30 years of age, you should also arrange an ECG. Then you should schedule the patient to be first on the operating list. Patients with diet-controlled diabetes, normal use and ease, and good glycemic control do not usually need any special precaution. Let's now discuss how we will manage a patient with non-insulin-dependent diabetes. You should omit the usual oral hyperglycemic drug on the day of surgery. However, if the patient is taking long-acting hyperglycemics, like glibenclamide, these should be discontinued for 24 to 48 hours before surgery. For major surgery, an insulin infusion regimen is required. Let's next discuss how we will manage a patient with insulin-dependent diabetes. You should omit the usual dose of subcutaneous insulin on the day of surgery and commence insulin infusion. If the patient is on long-acting insulin, this should be stopped the night before surgery and an intravenous insulin regimen should be started. You should continue insulin infusion until the patient resumes oral intake. You also need to know how you would manage if the patient happens to have hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia in the perioperative period. In terms of hyperglycemia, you should defer non-urgent surgery until glycemic control is achieved. If glucose level is less than 25 millimole per liter and there is no ketoacidosis, you can use four to eight units of subcutaneous insulin to gradually reduce the sugar level. If, however, ketoacidosis is present, you should seek urgent medical help. For emergency management of diabetic ketoacidosis, you should protect the airway and give facial oxygen, give intravenous fluids, administer four to eight units of atropid if glucose is more than 20 millimole per liter, and start an insulin sliding scale. You should check glucose, potassium, and arterial blood gases hourly until the patient is stable. How will you manage a patient who has got hypoglycemia? If the patient is conscious, you should give sugary drink followed by biscuits or a sandwich. If the patient is unconscious, 
then you need to give 50 mils of 50% dextrose intravenously. If intravenous access is not possible, then give glucagon one unit intramuscularly or rub glucose gel on the gum. So that's how you would manage a patient with hypoglycemia. I hope you found this video on the management of a patient with diabetes in the perioperative period useful for your exam and of course for your clinical practice. And until we meet again on another video for MRCOG, goodbye from Valalai in the north of Sri Lanka in Jaffna. Thank mm -hmm. you.